Good morning, you beautiful people. My name is Ronan. This is the Little Seal English Podcast. This podcast is all about spare. And I want you to, number one, spare me your freaking bullshit. I am fed up of your excuses. Spare me your excuses. I've heard it all before. Excuse me, could you spare me a dollar? Look, I can't spare you a cent. I haven't got anything to my name right now. Would you be able to spare me, like, ten minutes this afternoon to move a couch? Look, I'll spare you the sight. There was blood and guts everywhere. It was rank. Spare me your opinions on politics. I am not interested. Look, don't worry, I'll spare you the trouble. I can lift it myself. Many different meanings to the word spare, eh? And that's what this podcast is all about. To spare. We're going to look at the verb, we're going to look at the noun spare, and of course we're going to look at some idioms to spare. Have you ever been at a party where no expenses were spared? I would love to go somewhere like that. That would be a very nice party to go to. Sit back, relax, grab a pen and paper, but wait, first go to my website and download the free podcast workbook. I absolutely almost forgot to talk about it. I have finally published my very first podcast workbook. I have finally published a kind of like small ebook, I guess, and it is available for you on my website right now, littlesealenglish.com. Go there, and that's where all the information is, and you'll see a button to download podcast workbook. Click it. Unlock so much English for yourselves. After you do that, then listen to this podcast all about spare. I hope you're happy, I hope you're healthy, and I sincerely hope you enjoy the next 20-something minutes of spare. Good morning. Let's learn about the verb or word spare. S-P-A-R-E. And the aim of this podcast is to look at spare as a verb. I spare, you spare, he spares, we all spare. Look at some idioms with the word spare. And look at some really high-level collocations with the word spare. Like, what are some things that you can spare, literally and figuratively? So, to start, spare as a verb. To spare something is to make something like time or money or some sort of resource available for someone else. That's like the official meaning of the verb to spare. It's really, really commonly used when you're asking for something from a person you know, someone with a good relationship. If you're asking a friend to spare something, like time or money, you're asking them to give you time. You're asking them to give you money. And honestly, you know it's not a lot of trouble or effort for them. You know, you wouldn't really ask a friend to spare you $10,000. Well, maybe you would. Maybe you're absolutely rich. I don't know. But I certainly wouldn't ask my friends to spare me $1,000, $10,000, a million dollars. They don't got it. So how can we use spare as a verb in connection with time or money? Well, the most common is like for a question. Can you spare me a dollar? Hey, Ronan, can you spare me a dollar? I forgot my wallet. Hey, Ronan, could you spare me a a loony? A loony is like a dollar coin in Canada. Hey, Ronan, can you spare me a loony for the machine? I'd love to get a drink. Or maybe you would need a toonie in that case. A toonie, by the way, is a $2 coin in Canada. I'm not joking. We have loonies and toonies. And a loonie is $1 and a toonie is $2. And if I ask you to spare me a toonie, if I ask you to spare me a loonie, I'm asking you for a dollar or $2. Maybe where you're living, oh man, do you have a euro to spare? I'd love to buy a burger. I don't know where you can buy a burger for a dollar, for a euro, but whatever it is. So we usually use it in the question form. Can you spare? I would say, can you spare me? Can you spare me a dollar, please? Can you spare me a euro, please? Now, you might ask a friend for time to help you with something. 
Could you spare me 15 minutes this afternoon to move a couch? Hey Ronan, would you be able to spare me some time this weekend? I gotta move some furniture. Sorry for the late notice, but could you possibly spare me an hour tomorrow to move some stuff? And that is like if you're moving house, you need some help. But in the first example, could you spare me 15 minutes this afternoon to move a couch? If that were the situation, I would have everything ready to go. So when my friend arrives, I could make, I could utilize the time most effectively. So I'd have the couch by the door if possible. And when they arrive, we just need to carry it downstairs. Could you give me 15 minutes of your time this afternoon? Could you spare me 15 minutes of your time this afternoon? Another example could be the responses to these. Of course I can spare you a dollar. Absolutely I can spare you a dollar, a euro. I can spare you two euro if you want. Of course, man, I can always spare time for you. Don't be silly, just tell me when. Cert, I have time to spare. Cert, that's a very Irish one, C-E-R-T. Very slang, like cert means yes. So cert, I have time to spare. Yes, I have time to spare. For you, I always have time to spare. Sorry, man, I've no money to spare whatsoever. I haven't a cent on me right now. So that's kind of some collocations with how we use spare as a verb. And like two common ones. There are many others, but these are the common ones. Spare time, spare money. Spare a minute, spare an hour, spare a couple of hours. I can only spare an hour this weekend. I'm super busy. Hey John, I know you're moving house tonight. I can spare about two hours. Let me know when is best to come over. That's another thing as well. If your friend says, hey, I can only spare two hours. I can only spare half an hour. When your friend arrives, you should try to utilize the time as efficiently as possible, like I said earlier, and have everything laid out. Because you only have them for two hours. They can only spare two hours. So to spare in this case is to share resources to make something like time or money available. If we're talking business, you could also talk workers if different departments are connecting. Anywho, moving on. The next meaning of spare that we're going to look at is to omit a person of some of the finer details. So let's imagine you watch the movie Saw or the movie Jaws. You know those movies with a lot of blood and guts and it doesn't leave a lot to the imagination? Those very graphic movies? Well, you might be talking to someone and you know they don't like that sort of stuff you know they're a little squeamish around blood squeamish great adjective look it up squeamish you know they're squeamish around blood and stuff so you could say oh i'll spare you the gory details the shark eats everyone i'll spare you the gory details he cuts his arm off so to spare a person for example the gory details means that you're not going to describe everything that happened. You're just going to give like an overview of what happened. I'll spare you the gory details. The shark eats everyone. And that's in reference to the movie Jaws. J-A-W-S. If you haven't seen Jaws, add it to your list of movies to watch. It's a classic. Another thing that you can spare people when you don't want them to uh, experience or see something... I'll spare you the sight. The sight. I had a terrible injury on the weekend. I had some bad cuts and bruises on my leg. I'll spare you the sight. I won't show you the picture. Oh, I'll spare you the sight. It was nasty. I got an infection in my cut. Yeah, I'm not going to show you that. I'm going to absolutely spare you the sight. So if you don't want to show a person something, you could say, I'll spare you the sight. Or if they show you something that you don't like, you could say, oh, spare me the sight next time, please. Your your words were enough. I didn't need to see that picture. Sometimes you might want to spare a person of the boring details. To spare the boring details. Very similar to long story short. I'll spare you the boring details. Flight got cancelled. Stuck in an airport for 17 hours. It was hell. Obviously. I'm not going to go into detail about the 17 hours in the airport because that's boring. 
So obviously, I'm just going to skip over it. Look, long story short, I was stuck in the airport for 17 hours. It was hell. I'll spare you the details. I was stuck in the airport for 17 hours. It was hell. So very, very similar to long story short. Now, there are times when we can also use, I'll spare you the boring details at work, for example. I'll spare you the boring, tedious details. I fixed your problem. I'll spare you the boring details, but your website is now working. You're welcome. So you are not going to explain exactly what you did or exactly how you did it. You're just going to let them know it's done. How? By sparing them the boring details. Well, let me spare you the jargon and all that stuff. I fixed your problem. Your laptop is working. Jargon is another one. Jargon is like the vocabulary related to a particular field. And so for me, the jargon in English language teaching would be words that other English language instructors are familiar with, but not the average person. So I'll spare you the jargon. Your website is now working. I'll spare you the boring details. So there's a few ways that we've used it, but the best is yet to come because the next use of it is very dramatic and I love drama. We use the next example of spare when we're angry, when we're pissed off, or when we want to be like really, really, really direct with a person. We use the following use of spare when we want a person to stop doing or saying something. We can even interrupt a person with the following phrases. But if you do, it's generally negative. Very, very negative, serious, and uh, it could go down bad. For example, a person keeps arriving to work late. They always have an excuse. One day they missed the bus. The next day the alarm didn't go off. The next day their grandparent died. The next day the other grandparent died. They have a lot of grandparents. I had, I guess. But whatever it is, they always have some form of excuse. Then one day they come in and they start to explain to the boss why they are late and the boss is angry and the boss says, spare me your excuses. You're always late. If you're late one more time, you're fired. Spare me your excuses. Spare me the excuses. Very, very dramatic. And we use that way, this example, spare me your excuses, when you're tired of hearing the excuses, when you're pissed off because all you get are excuses and you can't listen to any more excuses, spare me the excuses. Oh, spare me the excuses. You're always late. Spare me your excuses. You cheated in the exam and I know it. So spare me the excuses. Just admit you had made the mistake. Come on, fess up. Maybe there is a person who's always apologizing or a person who is apologizing, but you don't quite believe them. Spare me your apology. Spare me your apology. I know it's fake. He can spare his apology. It's all bullshit. So do you know someone that's always, always, always apologizing for something? And you don't really believe it by any means at all. It could be an ex. You know, maybe the, the ex did something really bad and they're trying to apologize. Oh, spare me your apology. You didn't accidentally sleep with her, for example. So spare me your apology. I am not accepting your apology. Piss off. That's basically what that one means. Another thing that we often want to spare or that we want a person to spare is bullshit. Spare me the bullshit. Tell me what actually happened. If you think a person is lying to you, you could say spare me the lies or spare me the bullshit. Just give me a break and tell me the truth. Spare me your bullshit. What's really going on here? Spare me your bullshit. If you don't believe a person, you tell them to spare me the bullshit. Cut to the chase. Don't lie to me and tell me the goddamn truth right now. Very aggressive, isn't it? You can say, spare me the sob story. The sob story. Google sob story. Oh look, spare me the sob story, woman. If you don't have a ticket, you're not getting in. It's very, very similar to like Cry Me a River. 
it means that you don't really care about their circumstances. So spare me this sob story. I don't care why you're always late. If you're late tomorrow, you're fired. Spare me your excuses. Kind of similar in that case. And then there's times when someone wants to talk to you about a topic that you've no goddamn interest in talking about. It happens quite a lot. In that case there, let's imagine the person wants to talk to you about politics. Oh, spare me the conversation on politics. I'm not interested in that tonight. Let's talk about something else, like the weather or paint. Much more interesting and neutral than politics. Oh, spare me your opinion on politics. I really don't care. But again, these are very blunt. These are all very dramatic. I think the most common ones for you would be spare me your excuses, spare me your apology, I guess. But now we should take a look at spare in a more, say, positive light in that regard. You know, spare a person the trouble. Spare a person the difficulty. Spare a person the pain of doing something. And that's very nice. That is very, very positive. And that's when you prevent a person from having to experience something difficult or unpleasant. And it can go from trivial issues to very, very serious issues. For instance, if I'm hanging out with my friend and I'm over at his house, it's getting late and he offers to drive me home because, you know, it's it's cold in Canada. It's winter, for instance. I'd say to him, no, man, I'll spare you the trouble. I'm going to walk home. I need the fresh air. I'll spare you the trouble. I'll spare you the trouble of driving me home. It's not a huge amount of work from my friend, but it requires effort. He has to put his shoes on, has to go outside in the cold, drive in the dark and then drive back by himself, for example. So I could say, look, I'll spare you the trouble. I'll walk home. I want to walk. I'll spare you the trouble. I can get a taxi home. Do not worry about it. In that case there, it's kind of positive. You know, I'm being nice to a friend. However, 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 however. Look, I'll spare you the trouble. Sit on your fat ass and I'll get a taxi. That's negative. And that's a very negative one. Obviously it is. I said sit on your fat ass, I'll get a taxi. And that's if a person isn't going to help you. If you're pissed off. So the exact same sentence can be positive and negative. All just depends on the context of the situation. Oh, don't worry, I'll spare you the trouble. I'm going to walk home. The weather is not that bad. Well, look, don't you worry. I'll spare you the trouble. I'll get a fucking taxi home. You sit there in your lazy ass. For whatever it may be. Maybe there's times when you don't want someone to do something for you. Oh, look, I'll spare them the trouble of. What could it be? Well, I'll spare them the trouble of driving me to the airport. I'll take a taxi next week. I wanted to spare them the trouble of buying me a present. I did not want them to waste their money on me. So to spare a person the trouble of driving a person to the airport. Look, it's no trouble for me at all. I'd love to drive you to the airport. Look, I'm going to spare you the trouble. The taxi's here. See you later. Thanks for the offer. So to spare somebody the trouble, the difficulty, the pain or something means that you're going to prevent them from experiencing that. Spare a person trouble, effort, difficulty. Oh, look, I'll spare you the effort. You relax, I'll bring it over to you. For example. Now, some idioms with spare. The first one, with no time to spare. Oh yeah, we got on the subway and the train departed. We got on the subway with no time to spare. The train departed. Oh yeah, we got through security with no time to spare. We really cut it fine. I got through security, jumped on the airplane and the doors closed. With no time to spare, I made it. Guys, we do not have time to spare. We need to get the fuck out of here right now. So no time to spare means that you literally have to do something now. And if you use it in a story... Like, oh, we got on the subway with no time to spare, the doors shut. That just means at the last second. If you were a split second late, you wouldn't have made it. 
Or they won the soccer game with no time to spare. Last kick of the game, for example. Another idiom is to have no expenses spared. No expenses were spared. And that means that you spent all the money there is. For the royal wedding, for the royal coronation, no expenses will be spared. They will spend a ridiculous amount of money on something. No expenses are spared for the security of the US president. They spend enormous amounts of money on protecting that person. So no expenses are spared. I would love to be able to say no expenses spared. However, I think that's always going to be beyond me. So no expenses spared. You didn't not spend money, if that makes sense. The next one is to feel like a spare part. It's kind of sad, isn't it? I just feel like a spare part. I don't really know what I'm doing here. That's really, if you're lost, you might feel like a spare part. If you're down or feeling blue, you might feel like a spare part. Maybe you're in a group project and you just feel you're not pulling your weight. You know, you feel you don't really know what's going on. In those cases there, you might feel like a spare part. So kind of sad one, but one important one to talk about. If you do feel like a spare part, talk to someone about it. Maybe figure out why you feel like a spare part and figure out how you can make yourself a main part. For example, if you're working in a company and you feel like a spare part, what can you do to make you feel more like you belong? The next one is something that we talked about already, a spare moment. Oh man, do you have a spare moment for a second? Can you spare me a moment? Very general, very, very general. Maybe if you want to talk to your boss quickly. Hey, uh, can you spare me a quick moment? I just want to ask one, ask, I want, I will, excuse me. I just want to ask you something. I just want to run by, I just want to run something by you. I just want to run something by you. Hey, Joe, can you spare me a moment? I'd love to run something by you. The last idiom that we're going to look at, I think it's the last idiom, yes it is, is to spare a thought for. And when you spare a thought for a person or for something, you make an effort to think about them in a sympathetic way, to empathize with them, to think about their bad luck, for instance. So right now, I'm sparing a thought for the Irish rugby team who lost a big game on the weekend. It was very, very sad. It was two weeks ago, but I'm still feeling the pain. But to be more serious, you should spare a thought for those who are less fortunate than you. Oh, spare a thought for the cleaners. Pick up after yourselves. That's one that you could probably use. Spare a thought for the cleaners. I've been to places where, you know, there is a cleaner, but at the same time, it doesn't mean and does not justify you making a mess of a place. And so at work, if someone is making a mess, I might say, dude, spare a thought for the cleaners. Someone's going to have to come in here and clean that up. You made the mess. Could you not just do it? It'll take you like one minute. So spare a thought for the cleaners. Spare a thought for your neighbours. Keep it down. That could be used in many contexts if you're playing music too loud. I know when I was in college, the walls were very, very thin. And some of our neighbours were quite loud. They did not spare a thought for us at all. Spare a thought for those who do not have enough food. Spare a thought for those affected by very common one. Spare a thought for those affected by the wildfires, the floods, the war, the famine, the drought, whatever it may be. So think about them, make an effort to think about them and their bad luck, and then hopefully do something. Don't don't just think about it. Oh, too bad. Well, I'm going to continue on in my life, even though that's generally what happens. All right. So what else can we talk about? Now, spare is also like a noun, you know, and I need a spare. And that could be for whatever the context is known. My charger is broken. Do you have a spare? And if the context is known, you just say, do you have a spare? Do you have any spares? You know, you must always carry a spare with you. You never know when your original is going to break. 
The spare in terms of a car is the tire in your car, the spare tire. If you get a flat, I have a spare, don't worry. So that's kind of how it's used as a noun. And then like some collocations in terms of adjective, like to use spare as an adjective. Do you have any spare change? Can I borrow a spare pair of socks, a spare t-shirt, for example? Do you happen to have one spare blah, blah, blah? Spare tire, spare battery, spare wheel. Do you carry a spare tire? Does your car have a spare tire? Many, many ones of those. And of course, the best one, spare time. But overall, folks, that's kind of it for spare, I think. So spare as a verb is to make something like time, money, or resources available for someone else. Spare is when you omit details, like to spare you the gory details, I'll spare you the boring details, I'll spare you the sight, for example. The next one was dramatic. When we're angry, spare me the excuses, spare me your bullshit, spare me the apology, I know it's fake, you've been lying to me for 20 years. That's a juicy one right there, spare me the apology, it's all bullshit, all you speak is lies. Spare me your bullshit, spare me your sob story. And of course, the more positive one, I'll spare you the trouble. Positive if it's good. I'll spare you the trouble, don't bother yourself. Look, I'll spare you the trouble, don't bother yourself. I'll do the cleaning, I'll do the laundry, I'll do the groceries, like last week. Ooh, drama right there. Dun dun dun. But yeah, you get it. So spare. Oh, and the idioms. Yes, many good idioms. No time to spare. No expense was spared. I feel like a spare part. I just don't know what to do. A spare moment and to spare a thought for. Well, I think that's really it. I hope you enjoyed this podcast. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is that. My name is Ronan. This is the Little Seal English Podcast. This podcast was all about spare, but you know there's way more than just that happening. For instance, you can download the free podcast workbook from my website, www.littlesealenglish.com. And that is a cool, cool workbook that you can use for any and every bit of podcasting you listen to, for a TV show, for, for turning anything into a learning experience. That's essentially what you can get. So go to my website and download that ebook do it and get ready because in the future like at the end of november i'm running like a free training week i am then launching a course so i'm very excited so lots of lots of stuff happening very soon in the meantime go to my website download that free stuff read the emails i send you be happy be healthy go play with a dog go jump in a lake go climb a mountain go climb a tree and shout from the very top have fun and I will talk to you all very, very soon. Bye for now.